Today, I'm gonna to show you how to add depth to your pictures by adding a really cool window reflection effect. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. This video is super cool because it's a very easy way to add a little bit more visual interest to a photo. We're gonna take our background image and add a couple of different layers of window texture over top of it. And we're gonna color match the window texture to our original image, making it look like the lights in the original image actually affect this texture. This effect is super quick and best of yet, you can actually download these images on flurn.com for free and apply this texture to your photos. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got our base image and we've got our texture. Now you can just find any type of stock image that texture that you want. In this case, we're going for some raindrops and we've got some bokeh. The real thing you wanna look for is light elements like this on a dark colored background. That's gonna allow you to mix these two a lot better. So you can see where we don't have these water droplets and where we don't have the lights, it's basically just a really dark background. So that's perfect. Now let's go ahead and grab our move tool. We're gonna to click and drag from one image to another and hit F for full screen. Now the first thing we wanna do is just make this a little bit bigger. So we're gonna hit Control or Command T for transform. And I'm gonna scale this by grabbing the cor corner and holding Alt or Option. That's just gonna scale it right about the middle point. Something right about there looks pretty good. So we've got our texture in place. We need to go ahead and blend it into the image. So because we wanna get rid of the dark areas and just leave the light areas, we're gonna change this from normal and go down to screen. There we go. And that just makes the darks invisible. Now we have a screen blend mode. I can just hold shift and move this to the left or the right to find exactly where I want to put this. Okay, don't forget at this point, if you wanna scale it a little bit larger, you can still do that. Control or Command T, we're just gonna scale this a little bit larger, something like that is starting to look really nice. Let's hit enter there. Now, at this point, it doesn't look <laughs> that great yet. Uh, a couple reasons why. One is that my subject is perfectly in focus, and then these water drops are also perfectly in focus. So that really wouldn't be the case. If you were looking through water drops or through glass, the glass would probably be out of focus, and then your subject would be in focus. So you kind of have to pick one or the other. You could blur your subject, but in this case, I think it makes more sense to blur the texture. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, uh, but before we blur the texture, I think it's a good idea always when you apply blurs to make your layer a smart object first. That way you can change your blur at any time. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna change the blend mode back to normal because whenever you're creating a smart object, you always want it to be in normal blend mode. So it's in your normal blend mode, we're gonna right click and go to convert to smart object. So here we have a smart object. Now you can see this little symbol right here tells us that it is in fact a smart object. So now let's go ahead and change this from normal back to screen again. It looks the same, but now we can apply our blur. We're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to blur, and then I actually really like this box blur. To me, it looks a little bit more like a realistic lens blur than like a Gaussian blur, for instance. Okay, and this is looking pretty good. Now we don't have to keep this just as it is. Again, this is a uh, smart object, so we can change this blur at any time. So there we go. You can see I can turn this box blur off and on if I want to. Fantastic. Now that the blur is there, let's hit Control or Command L on this layer, and we're gonna make our darks a little bit darker, which is simply gonna make my layer less visible. There we go. Something like that starting to look really nice. And keep in mind, because we have a screen blend mode, it's basically just making the dark areas invisible. So if you make those darks even darker, they're gonna be less visible. There we go. Let's hit OK there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, colorize this. I want it to be like similar colors to my image. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command U, and we're gonna click on Colorize. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring up our saturation so we can see what we're doing. And I'm just gonna bring my hue right over here to something like this. I want it to kind of mimic the colors in my image. And hit OK. So there we go, look at this. I can just turn all these filters off and back on, and you can see how it's integrating quite a bit better. In this case, it's not blurred enough, so let's just double click right here on our box blur. There we go, and I can simply just change the blur, hit OK and looking pretty good. So I think that actually look, works pretty well for my subject as a whole, but we've only got one of these colors represented here. Uh, and maybe I'm not sure exactly that I'm gonna put it right there. I think maybe right here is actually a little bit more interesting. Okay, so 
now that we have our blues on there, I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and we're gonna use this for the reds. So let's say control or command J to duplicate. I'm just gonna move this right over here. Okay, don't forget, you can always use a layer mask to decide if you want things to be visible or invisible. So we're gonna move it right over there. We're gonna go ahead and double click here on our hue saturation on the copy. And now I'm just gonna move this over and I want this to kind of like mimic those reds that are in the image. So let's hit okay there. All right, and that's looking really nice. Now I'm gonna put a layer mask on there and use my brush tool. So we're gonna just gonna paint black on my layer mask with my brush tool. There we go, super nice and soft here. And that's just gonna allow me to only paint in areas where I want the paint. And I'll just double click on hue saturation again and just find, you know, I can just make this color whatever I want. So it's kind of cool to match the light that's in your original image. That way it's just gonna look like, you know, these reflections are actually representing the light from your photo. All right, now this layer down below looks really good. We just got a couple of spots on the face that I kind of don't want to be there. So I'm just gonna paint black on the layer mask for those as well. All right, this is looking super cool. Now let's go ahead and minimize both of these. I just want a little bit of an effect down here. This actually, if I turn these off, this little lens flare came with the image, which is great because it's kind of lending itself to this sort of thing. So I want something down here. I'm gonna duplicate this blue layer. So let's hit Control or Command J and I just wanna put something down here. So let's just kind of click and drag down a couple times. You can zoom out if you want to too. That'll just allow you to kind of work a little bit easier. And now I can just kind of push this around wherever I want. Don't forget, by the way, if you want to, you can flip this upside down. Let's hit Control or Command T. I'm gonna right click and say flip vertical. There we go. And then I can see about maybe some different effects. There we go. That actually looks pretty cool. My friend is kind of look like he's in water or that we shot through a, a pane of glass with water on it. I think that's looking really, really nice now. Um, let's just do one more of these red ones too. Why not, right? We're in here already. Let's go ahead and make it, let's make it official. There we go. So we just add a layer mask and I wanna just paint this away. Here you can see we have kind of a hard edge right here on the texture. That's a dead giveaway that you added that in Photoshop. So we're just gonna grab our brush tool and paint black right over here and paint that away and we're good to go. Look at that texture. It's incredibly cool, super easy to do. And what I like the most about this is that we can color match it to the original image. You can actually download this PSD as well as these sample images and textures from flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you a free video every single week. And if you really want to enhance your Photoshop skills, we're talking about retouching, compositing, photo editing, coloring, it's time to join Flurn Pro. We've got an exclusive discount for you in the link right down below. Thanks again, and I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone.